If you love fall DIY decor, then you're not going to want to miss this. And I would also like to thank Glowforge for sponsoring today's video. Okay, sweet friends, I'm sure you can figure out that this is another Glowforge video. If you did not see my first one, I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner. But I recently just helped Glowforge launch this amazing budget machine that is a perfect crafting companion. It comes packaged extremely nicely. I was super impressed with the packaging. And it also fits perfectly on a desktop or tabletop, so it fits in my craft room perfectly. The problem with with the older machines not only are they extremely expensive but they were way too big for my craft shed so when I found out that they had not only a budget machine but a smaller machine I was so excited it is super affordable not only that it also comes with a pass-through that way you can use bigger sheets than the actual tray and they also have tons of materials that go perfectly with the machine as well so the Glowforge Aura brings your creative ideas to life in minutes. With its powerful laser, intuitive design, software, and proof grade materials, the only limit is your imagination. The precision is amazing. You have a live print preview, which I love watching this thing cut and engrave. It is super simple and easy to use and set up. And you can also engrave photos on materials and so much more. So we are going to get into to our first project in this video and the amount of projects that come free in the Glowforge app is absolutely amazing. They have something literally for every occasion, every holiday, every season. I am extremely impressed with all of the designs inside of the Glowforge app. You can also use your own designs if you will. So for instance, I cannot wait to use my Chalk Couture digital images to cut out perfect shapes for my chalk couture transfers so that's what i'm super excited to do but for now while i'm getting used to this machine i am new to a glowforge so i'm super grateful that i have the chance to get to know and learn this machine um, but while i'm getting to know it i'm just going to stick with the designs inside of the app so for the first one we're going to do this medium plywood chunky pumpkin shelf sitter with wheat and leaves fall decor core set of three. Now, because I didn't have any larger sheets of wood at this time, I did just go ahead and I did just go ahead and open this project, select all of the pieces, and then resized it to my wood inside of my machine. Now, the amazing part of this machine is once you put your piece of wood or whatever material you're using inside of the machine, it will take a picture of it. That way you can see exactly where your machine is going to cut. As soon as I was satisfied with the placement of the cuts, I went ahead and hit print. And then you're going to have to hit the button on the machine once it illuminates and let the machine do its thing. Once it's completely done, the machine is going to instruct you to let it cool down for a few minutes. And then once it's ready, you can open up the lid, take out your design, and pop out all of your pieces. You always want to make sure to remove the piece of paper on the design and that is there that way when your machine is cutting or engraving it is not going to burn your piece of wood so essentially it's there to protect it. So here they are with the paper removed and all cut out and then I take it to my craft desk. Now I just kind of separate all of the pieces and then I'm going to start by painting the pumpkins itself in the background. For the first pumpkin, I'm going to use my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint it one time and then paint it a second time once the first layer is dried. For the second pumpkin, I paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint, and I absolutely love this because you can customize this to suit your decor, and you can change it up any way you like. So for the second one, like I said, I did white, and for the third, I used my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. 
Next, I make sure that they are super dry. If you guys have been around, then y'all know that I'm super impatient and I like to use my blow dryer to dry in between coats. And then I just kind of set them aside to make sure that they were super dry. And I'm going to paint the wheat leaves with my gold acrylic paint. And I got this gold acrylic paint at Walmart as well. Next, I give all of my pumpkins a second coat. For the leaves, I did use my rub and buff on these. I don't know what happened to the clip. I probably forgot to hit the button to record. However, all I did was just use a little bit of rub and buff on each of the leaves. And then once that was completely dry, which that kind of dries down pretty immediately, um, but I like to just make sure it's super dry with my blow dryer. And then I'm gonna take a tiny paintbrush and I'm just going to make the little details in the leaves. Next, I'm going to take my super glue and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of super glue on the back of the pumpkin detail. And that's what I love most about these little wood pieces is that you do not need a whole lot of glue at all. You don't even need to use hot glue. I mean, you can if you would like, but I personally like to use super glue for this. And then I just go ahead and glue those pieces down to the front of my pumpkins. Next, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on the front of the pumpkins and I'm going to glue down the leaves. And then before it's really dry, I make sure to stand it up. That way it's nice and even and these aren't going to tip over. I just go ahead and repeat those steps for all of the other pumpkins. I also made sure to clamp them together. That way the leaves would not go anywhere and become uneven on the design. Once they were completely dry, then I'm just going to repeat those steps with the pieces of wheat in the back of each pumpkin. Now also, you don't have to follow what the picture looks like in the Glowforge app. You can totally put these pieces however you like, but I just personally loved the way that they looked in the picture, so I did try to follow that as best as possible. Now these did stand up on their own, but just to make sure that they stand up and don't tip over, I did take a little Dollar Tree block and hot glue one on the back of each pumpkin, again to make sure that they stand up really nicely. And that was it for this first project, you guys. Look how cute they look in a tiered tray. The possibilities are endless. You can sit these on a shelf or really anything that you like, and I'm so curious to hear what you guys think about DIY number one down in the comment section below and trust me you guys this is a huge learning curve for me so my wood pieces are not perfect I did end up like splitting a few of them but I just glued them back together it was no big deal and I know with time I'll get better and better Okay, friends, for the next DIY, again, to know me is to love me. If you guys know me, then y'all know that I absolutely love earrings. So that was one of the things I was most excited to make when I got this machine is my own earrings. So I went into the app. I found the earrings that I liked, and I loved these little pumpkin ones. The pumpkins are engraved, and then the machine will cut them out. So once the machine was done, I just lifted the lid and I took out my design and then I popped that out and made sure to remove all of the paper. Once I went ahead and removed all of the paper, then I painted two of the pumpkins on each earring with my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint and two of them with my moss Waverly chalk paint. Once my pumpkins were completely dry, then I went ahead and I painted the background of each earring with my gold acrylic paint. I 
I then picked up this jewelry making kit from Hobby Lobby and I took two of the little jump rings with my needle nose pliers. I opened them up and put those through the holes in the earrings and then I took the wire ear loop. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I believe they're called the ear loop, but you guys can correct me down in the comments. I know I'll have somebody letting me know if I'm right or not. Um, but I just go ahead, I put the ear loop over the jump ring. I use my needle nose pliers to close that up. And literally that was it, you guys. I'm so happy with these. Oh, and one last thing. I did take a little bit of Mod Podge over the design to make sure that the paint wouldn't chip and that these would last a really long time. I am so excited with the way these turned out. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think because I have had so many people asking me if I'm going to if I'm going to do earrings of the week, I used to do earrings of the week a long time ago. That's how much I love earrings so much. I have tons of different pairs and I'm really into clay earrings right now. Um, but like I said, I'm so excited that now with my new Glowforge Aura, I can make my own earrings. For the last and final DIY, we're going to do this medium plywood Hello Fall sign. And all I did was once again, select the entire project and then size that down to my piece of wood. Like I said before, I put my wood into the machine first, let it take a picture. That way I could fit it perfectly on my piece of wood and then I hit print. Once the machine lets you know to hit the button on the Glowforge, I went ahead and hit that and then let it do its thing. I don't know about you guys, but I love watching this thing cut and engrave. It's just so satisfying to me. Um, but once my design was done, I let it cool down like it instructs you to do. And then I pulled out my design. I pulled back that paper and popped all of my pieces out. Once again, I made sure that all of the paper was removed from my design, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint everything. For the back of the sign, I'm going to start by giving that two good coats of my white Wearly chalk paint, of course, drying in between coats. Next, I'm going to take my large chip brush and some antique wax, and I'm just going to dry brush all around my sign to make this look old and weathered. And as always, if you do not like that, you can totally skip this step. Next, I'm going to paint my little pumpkins. And as you can see where the stem meets the pumpkin, there is a little line. So I make sure to stay in the lines and I'm going to paint the first and the third with my Moss Waverly chalk paint. And then the second and the fourth, once again, with my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. I don't know about you guys. I'm just like matchy matchy like that. My brain just can't use different colors when like in a video i just like to stay with the theme if you will um but as always i love that you can customize this to suit your decor different colors whatever you like so once i was done painting the pumpkins then i went ahead and painted the stems with my gold paint and i also painted the hello with the gold acrylic paint as well and when i was popping this out again i wasn't very careful again this is a learning curve so um um, you live and you learn, right? I will make sure that I'm very careful next time. Um, but in the end, you couldn't tell anyway because where it broke, it just went right back together when I glued it. So it wasn't any big deal. But I did just want to mention when you pop out your pieces, make sure that you're super, super careful. So once the first coat was on, then I went ahead and did a second coat as well. Thank you. 
once my pumpkins were completely dry. I'm sorry you kind of can't see my hand is kind of covering it, but for the green pumpkins, I used my white Waverly chalk paint and I just kind of drew some details on my pumpkins. And then for the pumpkin color, I used my antique wax and once again, a tiny brush. I just loved it with a little bit of dimension. You can totally leave that out if you don't like it, but I personally loved the way that the details looked. I then arrange my pieces on the sign the way that I like it, and then I go ahead and glue those down with my super glue. Now, if you left this with a lighter coat of paint, then you could have seen where the machine engraved this, but I wasn't too worried about it because I kind of had an idea of the placement, and I just placed them where my eyes were happy. Again, you only need a few dots of super glue on each piece of wood and it dries down super quick. And that was it for the third and final project. Look how stunning this turned out. Y'all, I don't know if you saw my Hobby Lobby video where I just got a bunch of tiered tray decor and these are going to look perfect on my fall tiered tray. So once again, I would like to thank Glowforge for sponsoring today's video. Let me know which project was your favorite down below. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is nine years sober, if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. Head to glowforge.com to learn more about the Aura, or you can run to your Michaels and Joann's to pick up your machine today. Y'all, they are going quick. They are almost out of stock, so if you want one, you better grab it while you can. So with that being said, I love y'all so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload, or join the DIY fam here to your right.